Hey guys, today I'll be showing you 10 opening traps to win a free queen. And we have 5 openings for white and 5 openings for black. Most of these openings involve gambits or pawn sacrifices, which you guys will see in a moment. So let's start off on the white side. And the first trap is we're going to play the move pawn to e4. Black replies with c5, the Sicilian. And we're going to play pawn to d4, black captures. We sacrifice the pawn, push up our pawn to c3, and after captures, knight captures. This is a commonly known Smith Mora gambit. Black usually replies with knight c6, knight to f3, and now here, another common reply for black is pawn to d6 to prepare the development move of knight to f6 because if black were to play knight f6 now, white might be able to play pawn to e5 to attack the knight, and this is troublesome for black. So pawn to d6, we play bishop c4, just normal development, and after knight to f6, here comes the trap with as we play pawn to e5 anyways. So now black has two options to capture. I'll show you guys the option that loses the queen immediately first. So knight takes e5 is not a good reply for black because after captures, pawn captures, here comes the trap which is bishop takes f7 check, sacrificing our bishop. The only move for black in this position is to capture back with the king, and that would leave his queen on d8 undefended as we can just capture, and after just 10 moves, as white we already up a queen. So let's go back and see what if black captures not with the knight, but with the pawn instead. So even by capturing with the pawn, it is still advantageous for white because now we just capture the queen first, and here black has two options to capture with the knight, or to capture with the king. So for example, if let's say he captures with the king, because he wants to keep the knight on c6 to protect this e5 pawn and not allow us to capture. So now we can't capture this pawn, but we're going to play the move knight to g5 to attack this f7 pawn. And already, it's not easy for black to defend this pawn on f7 because white's threat is very simple, right? We just want to capture on the next move to give check and then we want to win the rook. So if he plays a move like bishop to e6, it doesn't really defend because we can just capture with the bishop. After pawn takes, we go knight f7 check anyways. So it's not easy for black to play. So now let's see what if black captures the queen with the knight instead. So now the knight, the king hasn't moved, so black can castle. The, even though the knight has retreated, it protects this f7 square, but now it leaves this e5 pawn undefended. However, we are not going to capture this pawn on e5, but instead, we are going to play an even stronger move with the move knight to b5. And the idea here is very simple. We are now going to use the knight on c3 on the other side of the board to give check this way in order to win the rook. And again, it's not easy for black to defend against this check because if let's say he plays a move like knight to e6, trying to cover this square is already a mistake because we can just take the knight first after bishop takes, we go knight c7 check anyways. So he can't protect with the knight and the best move here for black is to play the move rook to b8 because he can't to save his rook as he can't protect the c7 square. So now we go knight to c7 check and after king to d7, we're actually going to retreat our knight to b5, it seems kind of odd, but the idea here is simple. Our knight on b5 not only attacks this pawn, but we are also threatening to capture the e5 pawn with check, which is why we want we gave the, the check on c7 with our knight first. And already black has to be very careful because if he plays a careless move like pawn to a6, trying to protect the pawn and trying to attack our knight, this is already checkmate in two moves because knight takes e5 check, the king can't escape any way upwards because all the squares are covered by our pieces. The king has to go back to e8 and now knight c7 is checkmate. So black has to be very careful. Next, we have a trap against the Scandinavian defense, which is pawn to d5. So we're going to capture. After queen captures, we play knight to c3, queen to a5. All these are really common opening theory. And now we're going to play the move knight to f3 to invite black to play the move bishop to g4 to pin our knight, which is also very common. So now we're going to play the move pawn to h3, and black has two main options. He can retreat the bishop this way, bishop h5, or he can capture. The most 
Common replies bishop to h5, in which white can continue pawn to g4, pushing the bishop back, and then we play bishop to g2 to obtain this nice diagonal with our fianche to bishop. So even though this is the most common reply for black, in some cases, black would choose to capture our knight on f3 because he doesn't want us to activate our pieces. So now we just recapture the bishop. Our queen now attacks the pawn on b7. So black usually plays a very natural developing move with knight to c6 to block our queen. And also black can cast a queen side on the next move. Now we play bishop to b5, pinning the knight with our bishop and threatening to capture as well. The only move, the only natural move here for black to defend the knight is by playing queen to b6, but that just falls right into our trap because now we have this nice move with knight to d5 attacking the queen. And if you guys go back a few moves, the reason why we were able to play bishop to b5 was because our knight protects the bishop, right? So now after queen d6, knight d5, you might be wondering, well, black can just capture our bishop. No, because after captures, we now have knight to c, knight takes c7 check, hitting the queen, hitting the rook at the same time, and we win the queen easily. So black can't capture our bishop, and he, he the queen has to defend this c7 pawn at the same time. So he has to go back to queen to a5 now, and now we have this nice move with pawn to b4, and the queen is kind of trapped already. Black cannot capture the pawn with the knight due to the pin, um, and the queen already has no moves because the queen can't go to any one of uh, these squares over here. The queen has to protect this c7 pawn, and if queen captures bishop, same thing, we have knight takes c7 to win the queen. Moving on, we've seen two traps with uh, pawn to e4 on the first move, so now we have pawn to d4 covered as well. So after d4, d5, we're going to play the move pawn to e4, which is also known as the black mara gambit. So after pawn captures, knight to c3 attacking the pawn, black usually replies with knight to f6, trying to protect the pawn, and now we play this move pawn to f3. We want black to capture our pawn on f3 so that we can recapture and develop a piece. But here, instead of the more common capturing back with the knight, we're actually going to capture back with the queen. And now we set up a trap in which we want black to capture our pawn on d4. So in the starting opening moves, we've, it seems like we are just a beginner player who's giving away all our pawns for free, right? But actually we're sec setting up this trap because after queen takes, which is actually the top engine move according to Stockfish, but because the engine can calculate billions of lines and variation, it's always able to find the best moves, but as a human, it's very difficult to do so. So here we're going to play bishop to e3. And now the most common reply for black here is to play queen to b4, moving the queen out of the way, and also attacking the b2 pawn. And a natural reply here for white is to cast a queen side, because we get our king to safety while protecting our pawn at the same time. But this might be what black wants us to do because now he has a really strong move with bishop to g4, pinning our queen to our rook. And it looks like we may lose material at this moment. But instead of reacting to this threat of the bishop, we do not move the queen and instead we play this brilliant move with knight to b5, ignoring our queen completely, we just give away our queen because after, if bishop takes queen, we have knight takes c7 and that's just checkmate in one. And as you guys can see, more than 11,000 people fell for this simple checkmate in one move and your next opponent might fall for this trap as well. And surprisingly enough, the highest rated game I could find according to the Lee Chess database was played by a 2600 as white versus a 2200 playing black in a rapid game. So this proves that even high, highly rated players sometimes overlook such a simple checkmate like this. So if black doesn't capture the queen, what can he do then? So our knight on b5 is protected by our bishop, so black can't capture our knight. And the knight on b5 is actually very annoying because not only we threaten checkmate in one, but we block this black's queen defense on the b7 pawn as well. So we also have the threat of capturing here on b7 with our queen. Black can try to play knight to a6 to protect this main in one, but now we just play the move queen takes b7, 
And it is ready winning for white because our queen attacks the rook, queen attacks the knight. We can also play knight takes e7 check, or we can also play queen c6 check, which are some of these few attacking ideas. All right, next we've seen pawn to e4 and pawn to d4 traps. So now I'm going to show you guys traps involving first move, which are knights. So let's start off with the first move, knight to c3. Now if black replies with pawn to d5, we're going to play pawn to e5. And after captures, we're actually going to gambit this pawn. We are not going to recapture back, but instead we're going to play the move bishop to c4, developing a piece. Now, this trap is interesting because you can start off differently as well. So let me show you. Let's go back to the start. And instead of knight to c3, we can play pawn to e4 on the first move as well. Black replies with d5, the Scandinavian. We can play knight to c3. And after captures, bishop c4. Essentially, we come back to the same position after tran via transposition. So black usually plays knight to f6, try and protect this e4 pawn and develop a piece at the same time. Now we play this move pawn to d3 and after pawn captures, instead of recapturing back the d3 pawn, we're actually going to sacrifice another pawn and we play the move knight to f3, developing another piece. Now, surprisingly enough, the most common reply here for black is actually pawn takes pawn as black is being greedy and tries to gob up as many pawns as possible. But as you guys can see, the evaluation bar on the left suddenly shot up because we have this nice trap with bishop takes f7 check. So similar, remember to the first trap I shown in the Smith Mora Gambit, it's a similar idea where we take on f7 with the bishop because after king takes, that leaves the queen undefended. We capture the queen and we're easily one queen up. And lastly, for the fifth and final trap for white, we also got the move knight to f3 covered. So after knight to f3, pawn to d5, we're going to play pawn to e4. Again, gambiting our pawn, our e4 pawn, because after captures, we play knight to g5. Black usually respond with knight f6 again, trying to protect this pawn. And we play the move pawn to d3, because after captures, we capture back with the bishop. And now the most common reply here for black is pawn to h6 and over 500,000 people have fallen for this trap. So if you look at white's pieces right now, it's kind of similar to the previous trap, right? Because our knight is activated, our bishop is activated as well. It seems like we have some sort of um, trap on the black queen, right? Because our queen is in line with the black queen, even though it's blocked by the bishop right now, but it's just slightly different. So how do we, what is the move here to activate the trap? The move here is to play knight takes f7, forcing black to deal with this knight because our knight attacks the queen, attacks the rook. And after king takes, we are going to play bishop to g6 check, forcing either the king to move away or the king to capture our bishop. And that leaves the queen in discovered check as we can just win the queen on the next move. All right, so we have shown five traps for white and now we're going to do the same five traps for black with various openings. So let's start off the first one with pawn to e4. We play pawn to e5, knight to f3, knight to c6, very common stuff. And against the Italian game with bishop to c4, we're going to play this move knight to d4, inviting white to capture our pawn on e5 because now our pawn on e5 is undeveloped, sorry, unprotected. So after pawn takes, we play queen to g5, attacking the queen and, sorry, attacking our queen attacks the knight and attacks the pawn on g2 at the same time. And also our queen to g5 move invites white to capture on f7 because many players will think that our queen g5 move is a mistake because after knight captures pawn, the queen, the, the white knight attacks our queen, attacks our rook, but now we capture this pawn on g2, attacking this rook on h1. White usually plays rook to f1 to try to protect this rook because otherwise we will just capture the rook with check. So rook to f1, now we capture this pawn on e4 with check instead. And now white has two options, right? To block the check. He can block with the queen, but that just loses the queen because we can just capture. And if he blocks with the bishop, now we have knight to f3 smothered checkmate. And as you guys can see, according to the database, more than 320,000 games have ended this way, which is an insane amount considering this is such an easy checkmate in just seven moves for black, right? So this proves that many players will potentially fall for this trap. Next, we have another trap 
in same in the same opening e4 e5. But now if white plays the move pawn to f4, which is the king's gambit. So we're going to play pawn to d5, ignoring the f4 pawn and striking back at the center. Usually white captures here on d5, and we're going to play this move pawn to c6 after captures, knight captures, and white usually plays the move knight to f3 here because he wants to cover this square on h4. Why is this square on h4 very so important in the king's gambit? Because if let's say white plays a move like pawn captures, which is the second most common reply actually, and this is really a mistake for white because now queen to h4 check is deadly because if white blocks with the pawn, now queen to e4 check comes, king's under attack, and black will win the rook on h1 on the next move. If white doesn't block with the pawn, the only move with the king is king to e2, and after knight to d4 check, king to d3, bishop f5 check, this is just checkmate in 8 moves according to Stockfish. So it's really completely losing for white. Which is why white cannot capture here on e5 and has to play knight to f3 to cover this square on h4. So now we're going to play pawn to e4, pushing up our pawn to attack the knight. White usually goes with knight to e5. And now if we play the move queen to h4 check, white can just reply with pawn to g3, blocking the check and protecting the f4 pawn. So we can't do that. But instead, we play the move bishop to c5, just develop our piece and control this file so that white cannot castle in the future. Now, a common move for white, which is also very natural here, is to play the move bishop to b5, developing a bishop and also using this pin to attack our knight on c6 as he's threatening to capture on the next move. So now instead of dealing, dealing with this um, threat of knight takes c6, we are actually going to set up a trap for our opponent with knight to f6. So we make our opponent think that we made a blunder and we miss that he can just capture our knight because after pawn takes, bishop takes c6 check, we lose our rook in the corner. But this is all part of our plan because we just block the check with our bishop and after bishop takes rook, here we have this nice trap of bishop to g4 trapping this queen on d1. There's no way for the queen to escape. There's no pieces that can block this queen from our bishop, our knight on f6 protects the bishop as well, so the queen is trapped. And after, even though white can play bishop to c6 check, we just move our king either to e7 or to f8, get off, get out of the way, and the queen is still trapped on d1. Now, one of the highest rated games I found on Lee Chess was played exactly in this move order, exactly in this variation, and black here played king to e7. This game was played between to 2200s and the game continued. White tried to play pawn to d4 to try to confuse black by attacking the bishop, but we just captured the queen. And after pawn takes bishop over here, black played bishop takes c2, threatening queen to, to d1 check. So white responded with knight to c3, protect the square. Now queen to d4, black played queen to d4, a very important move because now the queen prevents white from castling kingside and this position is really very difficult for white to play. White played bishop to d2. Black continued with knight to g4, threatening queen to f2, checkmate in 1. White defended with rook f1, and now pawn to e3. As you guys can see, black's pieces are slowly collapsing on white's position. Now just a quick reminder that we're not here to analyze this game in depth, and I'm just showing a game example of uh, two high-rated players which I found quite interesting. As we can see, black's various attacking ideas. So white played bishop to c1 here, bishop back. Now white continued with rook to d8, piling up on the d file, putting tremendous pressure. White played knight to d5 here, check. And after rook takes, bishop takes, queen to d1 is checkmate. Okay, so enough with the first move pawn to e4. Don't worry because we also have pawn to d4 traps covered. So after pawn to d4, now the Third trap for black we're going to show is pawn to e5, which is also known as the England Gambit. Because after captures, we play bishop to c5. And after knight to f3, we play pawn to d6. Again, similar idea of sacrificing our pawns. And after pawn captures, now this, a pro tip here is that this sneaky trap is very, very effective, especially if you play online chess in blitz or bullet games. And it's very important now after you play this move pawn to d6, you anticipate 
white to capture and you have to be very ready to play this move knight to e7 very quickly because we want to trick our opponent into thinking we pre-move this we pre -move this move or we mouse slip this move because we just gave away our knight right and as you guys can see from the Lee Chess database, over 450,000 players have fallen for this trap where White gladly, gladly took our knight on e7 because now bishop takes f2 check. So similar to the traps we've shown earlier as White, this now is just a reverse situation. The king has no moves to go. He's forced to capture the bishop and that leaves the queen on d1 undefended. Queen takes d1 and black easily won the queen. And if you think that only low level players fall for this kind of trap, you are wrong because there are plenty of very, very high rated players who have lost their queen this way with white if you just search up the games on the database. And one of the highest rated games I could find was actually played by a Fide master with over 3000 rating on leeches. And he played white and he lost his queen this way. So it's very, very effective against players of all all levels, which is why you saw earlier on, over 450,000 players fell for this trap. Moving on, we also have traps for d4, d5, as after c4, very common queen's gambit, we're going to play this move pawn to e5, which is also known as the Al Albin counter gambit. We have also made a video recently, so do check that out if you want to learn how to play the Albin counter gambit as black. So now a common reply is to capture this pawn on e5. We push up this pawn, to d4 to restrict white's movement because now our pawn is kind of annoying as it prevents white from developing his pieces normally for example with move like knight to c3 or like pawn to e3 which is why sometimes white would play pawn to e3 himself to try to remove this annoying pawn and also get rid of his doubled pawns on e on the e file now we play bishop to b4 check and white usually defends with bishop to d2 we capture this pawn over here to set up the trap as we give away our bishop on b4 because after bishop takes we capture on f2 with check if the king takes this let this leaves the queen undefended so we can just take there's no problem but white can try to play king to e2 to keep the queen defended instead so now pause for a moment and try to find the best move for black here if you thought that bishop to g4 was the best move you will be wrong because bishop after bishop to g4 white can play knight to f3 to block this check and we cannot win the queen. So instead of bishop to g4, the correct hit move here is actually to play pawn takes knight, but we promote it into a knight. We under promote it into a knight instead to give check to the king. So we force white to capture this knight and after now we play, now only we play the move bishop to g4 check to win this queen on the next move. And as I mentioned earlier, we've discussed this Albin counter gambit in one of our previous videos. So do check that out if you like to see the other moves or other variations for both white and black in this opening. Now, last but not least, we have a trap for higher level players or high, higher rated players. And starts off with d4, knight f6. White usually continues with pawn to c4. Now we're going to play pawn to e5, which is also known as the Budapest Gambit. After captures, we're going to play the move knight to e4, and white usually replies with knight to f3, and here we're going to play this move pawn to b6. Now, the reason why I said this trap was more towards for advanced players, because most beginners will not notice this move queen to d5, which actually attacks our rook and attacks our knight at the same time. So it seems like as black, we just lost a piece immediately. And even though it's a simple one move tactic, many beginners or players who are new to chess will not see this move and instead they will play a move like knight to d2 or pawn to e3, which is why I say this opening is more for higher rated players because we want white to play queen to d5 to activate our trap. So now we play bishop to b7, attacking the queen and Actually, we give this bishop on b7 away because after queen takes, we play knight to c6. So we protect our rook with our queen and we are trying to set up a cage to trap this white queen on b7. Now already, there's not many squares for the white queen to go to. 
the only square the white queen can escape to is queen to a6. And as black, we want to play this move knight to c5 on the next move to win the queen immediately as the knight on c5 would be covering this square on a6 as well and attack the queen. So white usually plays queen to a6 to try to escape the queen, for example, like something like this, this way, and go back. So here, instead of playing knight to c5, remember this important move, which is bishop to b4 check first, because after, let's say, bishop blocks, now after knight to c5, the only way the queen can escape is by playing queen to b5. That's the only square the queen can go because all the other squares here are covered by black's pieces. So queen to b5, and here another important move to remember is bishop takes d2 check first. We capture the bishop because after knight takes, sorry, knight takes d2, now pawn to a6 and the queen is trapped. So now we see the power of these two knights because this knight controls this square and this square. Our other knight controls this square and this square. So our knight work together and our pawn on a6 is attacking the queen. So the queen is trapped. Now remember, over here I said that bishop takes d2 is an important move because if we were to play pawn to a6 now, this would be a terrible mistake because white can give up his queen to capture this bishop. After knight takes, bishop takes. If you take a look at the material, white is actually plus one over here up in material because remember, at the start, we play bishop to b7 to give away our bishop. So essentially, white traded his queen away for three pieces and a pawn, which is why white is up in, in material. So be careful. And that's all for today's video. Congratulations on learning these 10 opening traps. In the comment section down below, let us know which trap was your favorite or which trap did you, met, did you successfully play in the game. If you're interested in learning the highest win rate opening after the first move pawn to e4, then click on this video. Thanks for watching and we see you in the next video.